Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiser Reich. I'm your host, Mr. Germany Lover, but the Portuguese Middle Africa dispute. Our Middle African governor has come to us with a request for aid. He speaks of Portugal supporting bandits that murder German and African police and then danger rule in Africa, which we do. We should take up the matter with Portugal ourselves. Oh, look at India, killing itself. Nice. We're looking pretty good with a black dossier. Not satisfied with the cabinet's decision. The discontented officers in Africa have leaked their evidence and allegations to the police. While we were pushing back against more wild bases of speculation, it's clear to the public an investigation necessary. That was worth a try. Social Democrats' criticism of the Reichstag. Our government policy has come under fire in the Reichstag, which Social Democratic deputies have been using as a tribune ever since the election of 1936. During debates on laws proposed by the cabinet, several of their MPs organized a protest, declaring the reforms would be a slap in the face of democracy and the achievements of the March re reforms of the Constitution. In addition, the agitators tried to appeal to the motion to the deputies watching, asking them to vote against all government policies and join them in the agitation to defend democratic principles. While reporting on this incident was muted in the right-wing press, Social Democratic papers gave it front pages and significant coverages. Fools, you d your, our designs are more democratic than anything they promote. A Middle Europa Commission Summit, choice of agenda. Delegates from all over Middle Europa states gather in Berlin for the biannual discussion as well as negotiations on the direction of the bloc's activities. Though hundreds of different issues will be discussed, only those which should receive the attention of enough member states will receive the time of day they need. It will also be up to the chairman of the Middle European Commission, who is currently from the German Empire, to select which of the many proposals will be implemented by bureaucratic authorities. There are two proposals with considerable support from member states, which sadly means that not everyone can be satisfied by the Commission's decision today. However, it's up to the Chairman. Enact financial injection. Frontrunner agenda chosen versus enact military or industrial advisors. Uh, second place agenda chosen, which I think we chose this one, but financial injection seems good for us too. I don't mind that one. I mean, we're building up roads and whatnot, but I still want more military factories. I want more of this, and we're going to need more uh, fuel later on anyways. Um, I really don't mind building up roads though. Roads are very nice to have. Mm, Anti-air supply. Supply uh, supply's going to be a problem down here. Supply might become an issue right here too. How's this looking over here? Supply is definitely going to become an issue down here over here though. Hmm. But more military factors would be nice too. Let's go with that. Why not? And we're still yearning for Kane. And we're still defending in Spain. Portugal denied our request. Portuguese government refused to discuss internal affairs with foreign uh, nations. Uh, this is not at all, and we have sent them a strongly worded letter reminding them of their duties to us. Unacceptable. Tell them that Africa that they can deal with it. Pretty much. So now hopefully we can start actually earning some army XP here. Because these guys are doing okay. Uh, but we got to get some, some more on these guys as well. Because right now, in Bulgaria, we're not doing okay. I just kind of waiting until the, the end comes for them. Was it the big Bush War? Very cool. I hope they beat the Portuguese. Because if they don't, we're going to kill the Portuguese ourselves. Hello, what's going on here? That's fine, you can retreat. Very good, very good, very good. 1937. Uh, extraction? Sure, this is very scary for us. Um, I might just have us pull back out a little bit. Mm. We might want to do this. It's fine, go and leave, it's fine. You guys push out that way. There you go, that's a little better for us. Do you guys actually do anything here? I don't think you would. Oh wait, we have only three divisions, I thought we had four. Did we lose one? Oh god. Well, that's not good. No crud. Probably was the tank division too. Arms industry, huh? Cheap manufacturers offers cheap loans to military manufacturers throughout Middle Europe and strengthen internal arms industrial manufacturing corporation. Sure, why not? Now who's justifying on us now? Norway. Interesting. Well, all right then. What a summit for peace. Hmm. We could. We don't have to though. Still 1937, of course. Military police would be nice. Could you actually do anything here? Definitely not going to attack there. Go this way. You're just here to, like, bog them down and destroy, like, their strength. That's all I really care about. 
a new governor. With the Colorado gone, we must appoint a new governor. Uh, while well, he's disgraced, there's the hope that whatever remains of his administration can bring order to the colony, or perhaps someone with more experience will be best in these turbulent times. Keep Fritz Kolba. He's already there. Rudolf Asmus, a famous and experienced administrator, will restore order. I don't know. Let's, let's check, out, check out this guy. Asmus, Rudolf, eh? Dr. Asmus, huh? Well, that's interesting. If you like to read about him, please go ahead. Very cool. Son of Atakus. BASF declares record profits. The Badisha Anlin owned Soda Fabrik, or Basif, has declared record earnings as of late. As the largest oil company operating in Germany and Eastern Europe as a whole, this is no surprise as concurrently with Ukraine's ongoing industrialization program, they've helped Ukraine's oil industry take off. We've been able to reap some of the benefits ourselves, especially due to the Skoropotsky administration's lucrative deals with German businessmen. We should take great advantage of this. Oh, yeah. You betcha. You're not going to win there, guys. As much as I want you to win there, you're not going to. And then expand the Kriegsschule. The war schools and war academies have formed the core of the Prussian officer corps since the 17th century. While they've not failed us, they should be expanded in order to accommodate the additional students, especially from the lower classes, to whom we should solely open up offers and positions to. Said and done. If you know about that, please go ahead. Yay! Opposition criticizes the army. The two most influential opposition parties, the SPD and the LVP, have begun using the Reichstag as a soapbox. Soap this time to agitate against military spending. Both parties have pointed out the massive finances rightfully dedicated to the Hayab and call for reduction, which they say could be redistributed to social services or education, supposedly and foolishly, according to them. Germany is under no threat except for the threat it creates with its aggressive military. Not only that, but the SPD de deputies pointed out the supposed influence of the Hayab in political appear uh, appearances, claiming that OHL is influencing the incoming government attacks which were immediately rebut rebutted in the parliamentary arena. How dare they attack our national heroes? I can't cut quite win there. But you might be able to win here. Maybe, 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 maybe. Surprise they're attacking us only, not anybody else. And now you've been cut off. So can we actually do anything here? Or That's one way to do it. Now I just got rid of two of them. I gotta get rid of another two. That will be great. And there they go. Once the organization drops and they're gone, that's actually really good for us. So that, that opens up a little more possibilities for us here, huh? If you could come down here and just like punch a hole through here, you could really make a big old encirclement. And that would be great, but I don't think you can. But you know what? We could try. Nice. Get some of those reds, even though you're losing territory up here to those guys too. Just don't lose the capital, please. Just go here. Nice. We're looking pretty good. What's this? Investments in Poland. Minor defeat. I don't think so, son. I like to. Oh, how much is this going to cost? Oh, we have no command power. Well. <clears throat> A political advisor, more political power, more war support would be good. Infantry equipment. Civilian factor construction speed in the middle of Europe. Okay. Score, industrial score, huh? Armor. Ooh, political power gain, too. Interesting. Stability and less resistance target. Elusive gentleman, plus two operative slots. That's not bad. On Mazan. I want that political power, man. And you're in. Yeah, there you go. Very good. 
Chilean Argentinian War. I read this last time, so if you read this one, please go right ahead. It's only 28 days, too. We have fifth research slot, which is actually very strong. Very, very good. Let's go ahead and use Mauser. That's fine. Field hospitals are going to be very good for us. Uh, maintenance companies for our tanks. Yes, please. How are the Bulgarians doing? They are not doing much except looting, it looks like. All right. You guys... Um, engineers, support artillery would be always be very good to do as well. What doctor are we going to go down? That's a real question. Hmm. Mobile warfare. Do we want emphasize tanks or infantry? Well, the front. Decrease the grip of Defrond. Long range tactical bombers. Shattering swords. Decrease the grip of Defrond. Push for his cousin Manfred's bastion of mass produced close air support fighter planes. Destruction of will. Strategic bombing. Second naval plan. The W system. Another war is inevitable. Slowly, Germany must enter the war footing once more. We should declare certain factories W plants to produce solely military production and begin the rearmament of our armed forces. <coughs> Excuse me. Prepare for the wide front operations. Vanquish French fortifications. And then they have Pax Germanica. Construct victory archers, huh? Doctrine of National Autarchy. The economic policy of Schlager's regime calls for a domestic economic uh, development through cooperation between state and large businesses. The state must direct the economy and navigate towards the interests of national defense and populace, achieve independence from foreign imports, and ensure harmonious development. That's not good. And we got them there at least. Disperse industry. Grab all the stuff out of his blueprints first. That's really not good. Yeah, this is really bad. We're doing better down here, at least. The Zentrum Reichstag faction speaks. Our government policy has come under fire on the Reichstag. Several members of the left wing of the Zentrum delegation have begun using it as a tribute. It's criticizing the direction of our government. Pointing out several of the policies proposed by our cabinet, as well as the biographies of the cabinet members, they claim they perceive a naked return to Bismarckian authoritarianism. And I cannot endorse this move, much like their predecessors, I fought hard against the tyrannical policies of culture count. Uh, though their claims are absurd, their speeches have been highly publicized. Sounds a bit treasonous. Sounds about right. There it goes, Puerto Rico. Road tr little trade unions, national autarky, fall of Batavia. Take three divisions. Can you do well here? Hopefully. Can you guys like move up? Do something. Report on the disappearance. Today, German newspapers have reported on the disappearance of a fairly notable journalist influential in the Empire's civil society throughout the past. Uh, decade. After 1936, his journalists moved to opposition against the government, reporting on authoritarian measures and calling for a new election which would form a government responsible to the Reichstag. 
Some call it conspiracy, but they are afraid, too afraid, to show themselves and say that in public. It's likely that in time the body of the unfortunate victim will be found, but by then the trail will have been gone cold and the citizens of the Empire will either be forced to accept mere unfound allegations or simply, of course, move on. Whoops. Happens, you know. Things happen. Can you guys actually win here? Help support your attack. Can you do well? Maybe? Leaden? Ukrainian exports soar. The war in America has drastically reduced the amount of exported wheat in the world markets. And our loyal ally, Ukraine, has been among those greatly profiteering, or profiting from the tragedy taking place in the United States. In addition, the world around has been recovering from the horrible economic recession. Despite the looming threat of war and still sore wounds from the revolt, Ukrainian exports have recovered very well, actually. The willingness part of the Skoropotsky administration to export grain in Germany certainly has its benefits. To some extent, Ukrainian dominance over the Ukrainian markets has its opponents move among more protectionist minded individuals, however. Never another turnip winter. Never another turnip winter, you know. There you go. Help them out. Help them out by, I mean, kill them off. Good. Yeah, I don't think Bulgaria's gonna really be able to win this one. But we might still have a chance to spank here. Nice job, nice job. The Reds are down there. They should be able to clean that up, but you never know. It's the AI we're talking about. Come on, let's go. What are we missing here? Fighters? Support equipment and trucks. Lots of trucks. Uh, here's 300 some. One, two, three. What are you doing? Like, bro, for real. Death of Eric Ludendorff. Newspaper in Munich. A report that Eric Ludendorff, the mastermind of the third OHL and the second in command of Paul von Hindenburg during the final years of the Valkyrie, passed away from liver cancer yesterday. While well, Hindenburg, who died three years ago, is almost universally revered as a master tactician and savior of Germany in his darkest hour to this day, Ludendorff's legacy is far more controversial. His military ability is unquestioned, yet he's seen as a puppet master of the authoritarian military regime that took control of Germany by the end of the Valkyrie in 1920. Trying to stop the parliamentarianization process, he attempted to threaten Wilhelm II one last time, yet as his services were no longer necessary, and Superior Hindenburg making a deal with the parliamentary reformists to keep the power of the army untouched, Ludendorff was forced to design her disgrace. Since then, he remained a looming shadow over the German far right, yet even those who revered him, having second thoughts once he got involved with the neo-pagan bulkish fringe under the influence of his wife, Matilda. His eccentric conspiracy theories and dabbling into esotericism ultimately led him to being ignored by far-right politicians who wished to present themselves respectable. Regardless, he'll be given a safe funeral, which will be attended by surviving members of his entourage as well as the royal family. Such a sh shame that a man of his talents fell so low. Ah, look at this. We're making a breakthrough. Fantastic. Can you just go ahead and just go north of the Tatra Circle? In order to mobilize the masses in this day and age, influential allies in the media are indispensable, as the Democrats and rioters have shown us in recent years. As a nonpartisan military man, Schlack unfortunately lacks his far reaching crucial media support, with the help of so called Tat Circle, now going to change. The ed editorship of the Berlin based monthly journal Die Tat, The Action, has been a stalwart ally of Schlacker's political vision for quite some time, in fact, and played a crucial role during the fateful weeks in the spring of 36, during which the magazine acted as a powerful opinion leader in the media campaign that eventually resulted in Schlacker's controversial appointment as Reichskanzler. 
Extremely popular intellectual patriotic youth circles, the Tot aims for the reversal of the Marsh Constitution, order, and the instatement of a nonpartisan charismatic leader who is able to synthesize the best components from both the left and right into an entirely new ideology, German Socialism or National National Socialism. According to Chief Editor Hans Zerrer, all existing parties have been deeply corrupted by liberal currents, and the only creation of something entirely new will be able to strengthen the German books, Gemeinschaft, and its struggle against syndicalism and seven cosmism. Of course, Schlecker's Querverbindung ideas and his close cooperation with the trade unions, no matter which ideology, fits well into that agenda. During the past few months, the young and charismatic Zerrer has closely worked together with Schleicher to advise him on domestic and foreign political affairs. His symbiosis between Detach and the Reich Chancellery might even grow closer. Zerrer and his colleagues have recently acquired the formerly Christian conservative newspaper Tagliche Rundschau, and now plan to transform it into one of the most important propaganda flagships for the government's vision. While the Tao will continue to appeal especially to an intellectual audience, the Rundschau has to be the paper for the masses. Finally, good patriotic media. Fantastic. Mandatory union membership. Events on the resistance of democratic society to your forms will fire less often. Nationalized railways. It's not bad. Uh, more population. That's the public works to be read before. From the Stadtliche Bankenaufsicht. The reckless nature of German banks led to the black money collapse. It shows that the government oversight is necessary to prevent it from happening again. The Reichsbank must be curtailed as well and cooperate more closely with the elected government. Of course, I think we read this too before. So if you're already about military mission in Constantinople, that'd be great too. And then what? Hmm. Form additional East Asia regiments. Germany's Asia is always in need of reinforcements. Be to handle local revolts or Japanese aggression. We've already invested, invested so much in Asian security. What's a division or two more? Buying time with spies, huh? Our foreign intelligence service, Abteilung Ilb, I was already aware that the next great European war is inevitable. That does not mean it has to come soon, however. Through clever use of intelligent assets, we can disrupt our likely opponents and delay their offensive actions until Germany recovers from financial and political troubles. Oswald, our eastern allies. Uh, uh, beg us to help them against impending Russian aggression, to deflect their offensives in advance, which will begin the construction of a great fortification line stretching across Eastern Europe, the Ostwall, which will make any Russian Western offensive too costly to attempt, and leading the flock. Medelioppa is our design, our project. It's only right that we assume a leading role with him, ensure that our organization reflects our interests first and foremost, and draw all the other members of the organization closer to us. The 1938 Budget Vote According to the Imperial Constitution, the annual budget of the German Empire was proposed by the Imperial Government and approved by the Reichstag and the Bundesrat. Each item on the budget had to be discussed separately, allowing the parliamentarians to lodge direct criticism towards government policies, with the enabling act eroding away standard parliamentary procedure and reducing the ability of the parliament to control the Reich's councillor's actions, the democratic opposition parliamentarians, which now include many SPD, LVP, and left-wing Zentrum deputies, expected to use a budget vote to hit Schleicher harder in the Bundesrat. Similar plans were being crafted by a bloc of opposition to line states. The Reich's councillor was aware of these plans. After discussing the matter with his clique of advisors and informing the Kaiser of his plans, and receiving the green light after a short discussion, he announced something unexpected, stating that the stability and national security of the Empire depends on the steady funding for the government apparatus without it being bogged down with parliamentary debates, he invoked the Enabling Act to approve an emergency budget for 1938, even though he pretty much everyone understood that there was nothing emergency about it. Uh, the news caused an uproar, accusations of power grabs and opposition of dictatorship, and enormous protests. Thousands of German citizens took to the streets in the major cities, however. Most of the protests were suppressed by mobilized police and military units. The last vestiges of power are slipping away from the grasp of the old institutions. Procedure matters little in this modern age, and Bavaria sues Schleicher. A Zentrum dominated government of Bavaria has announced an unprecedented decision. They're taking the government from, of Kutmann Schleicher to the Bundesrat for the gross violations of the Constitution. The decision was accepted without significant dissent by Heinrich Held's cabinet and was communicated to the Berlin the day later. Or the day after, immediately, picked up the newspaper and the public. The Bundeswehr has been compared to the Senate and the House of Lords as an upper house of, of the German Parliament, though holds different duties and is considered separate from the Reichstag. It is an assembly of representatives from, German, from Germany's federal states, which rules on certain government procedures such as dissolutions of the Reichstag or Reichs executions, and also serves as the Supreme Constitutional Court of the Empire. Never before has it had to rule on a case where a member state takes the federal government to court, however, so only on disputes within and between states. The Bavarian government declares that the Reichs Councillor Schleicher's reforms are a violation of the federal principles of the Empire, and some of them have even violated the Constitution. In addition, Schleicher is yet to give up his emergency powers in spite of said emergency having passed. The fact that Bavaria is the state champion in the federal cause is unexpected, historically. It was the most protective of its autonomy among imperial states, and extracted greater concessions than any other state in the Compromise, which led to the foundation of the Empire in 1871. The decision of the Bundesrat may soon test the durability of the Compromise. Who do they, they think they are? So we have 610 artillery, it's not bad. You know, honestly, I think we're going to go spirit, spirit firepower for this one. 
Just because it's 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 decent. Oh! Time to the war resumes, huh? Nice. Well, I can send you volunteers too, I guess. Anybody want to go to Italy this time of year? Let do that. And oh, you know what? We got Mountaineers. Might as well send them. You know what? You go right there. Because you got hot and Richie, you're heading down south. Well, they accept us. Okay, now they accept us. Yay! Do we need more planes? We need. We definitely need more planes. Thirty-two is not enough in reserve. Sixteen. Oh, sixteen. That's not ideal. Uh, yeah, that's really not ideal. We'll do what we can. What do we have here? Support for thirty-nine. And we'll go ahead and support for arms industry. It's January nineteen thirty-eight. We're attacking into this tile. Middle Europe Commission submit choice of agenda. Uh, if you go to this, uh, please go ahead. Uh, the proposal put forward by the chairman has found no competition, and so it will be implemented and next support for arms industry. Support for arms industry, which grants something for 180 days. What do we get? Oh, support for arms industry. Offer cheap loans to military manufacturers throughout Middle Europa and strengthen international arms manufacturing cooperation. Well, do we get anything from that? Maybe not. Let Uncle Plant uh, do that one, yeah. Cavalry division is fine. What else we got around here? Align Azerbaijan. The town's conference acquired the biggest prize in the Middle East, the oil of Azerbaijan. Have arranged a meeting with the senior Azeri diplomats in Baku. We are going to come to terms with them. By guaranteeing their independence, they might be willing to just come under a suzerainty without the fight. If that's the case. We're going to go ahead and increase relations with them. Even though it's actually pretty quite high already. It's actually very good. Look at that. Ooh. Not ideal. Here. What I really want to do is just to come up here and like beat them up. I want you to hold. You right there. Bundesrat makes a token resolution. After some deliberations, the Bundesrat has made a resolution requesting the Reichskanzler to follow the constitutional law and respect the Federalist principles of the German Empire. A statement which is ultimately token and does not commit Schleicher to any action. The news being made public have caused a debate in civil society, reactions ranging either from tacit approval of the judgment to disappointment with perceived infringement of civil rights. The government of Bavaria has accepted the defeat for now, but has stated that unless Schleicher's government swiftly abandons its alarmingly centralist line and recognizes that the emergency behind the tensions of the enabling act have passed, passed, they'll be required to take extreme action to defend federalism. Good, they're put in their place. Fantastic. Let's see what we can do. We have the fall of Burgos. Oh boy. Ah, what do we have here? And we have a couple of ginseng teeth too. Ah, fantastic. Lovely, 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 lovely. Oh, Burgos are good. Very good. So what do we have here? Anything of interest? Can you actually help out there? Would that be okay? Maintenance companies happen in 1938, everybody. Research speed and radar? Yes, please. And you guys are here. Gonna have a great old time in Italy, because everyone loves Italy. Everyone does. No problems ever in Italy. Lucretia, have fun. Do the best you can. I uh, still like offensive. It's still very nice. I literally just want you to hold out. And what else do we have here? Funds gain? Yes. I love it. Uh, Marines would be nice, but we're going to go with these. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, they're attacking us too. Look at that. Look at that. Yay. Sejuan. Well, we're probably not going to get involved in Sejuan. At least for now. Uh, head over here. Oh, they're attacking. They want us to attack. The commune aren't resist. The governor of the commune of France has shown his true face and refused to accept a reasonable demand. Though their reputation will suffer for this, a little meager gain compared to the growth to the growth intentions. I think they'll differently. They'll think differently once we march into Paris a second time. Hey, that's what we want in World War Sport, anyways. Uh, uh, Germany's agents doesn't always need reinforcements uh, to be handle local revolts or Japanese aggression. We've already invested so much in Asian security. What's a division or two more? You know. Hey, this would be pretty good to do, too. Ooh, this would be good to do, too, too. Bavaria declares nullification. Finding no resolution of the courts, the government of Bavaria has chosen uh, an extreme option to force the government to bend to their will. According to the proclamation by the Minister President, uh, all of the laws passed under the Reichskanzler Kurt von Schleicher's Schlecker's constitutionally illegal enabling act do not apply to the soil of the Kingdom of Bavaria and will not be enforced by Bavarian authorities. 
This has immediately raised the attention of the entire empire due to the brewing conflict between the government and the states, and the reactions range from tacit support to horror at the possible collapse of the empire. It's a nullification of imperial law, unprecedented in the history of the empire. Even those politicians and public figures opposed the Schlecker centralization direction, and sympathetic to Bavaria's goals of retaining the federal constitutional order, raised their eyebrows at this breach of legality, especially due to the dangerous precedent this may cause. However, these are also dramatic times, how dare they? Then we shall not build in Bavaria. Simple as that. Meeting of the cabinet. The shocking news from the Munchen was followed by an emergency meeting between the Reich's Chancellor and the numerous secretaries, <coughs> as well as delegates of friendly parties in the Reichstag, and the Crown Prince as a representative of the interests of the Kaiser. The rumor agreed that the situation was unprecedented and, if not managed properly, could lead to the breakdown of the Empire's relations with its constituent states. As a decentralized monarchy built upon the compromise between Pr Prussia and the other member states, such a blow would shake the very constitutional foundations of the German Empire. The plurality view in the cabinet favors a harsh approach which would protect the integrity of the empire against the rebellion of the state governments. But various actions can easily be construed as illegal, a violation of state's duties to the empire which is pretext enough for an intervention. Our ex execution. Declare any further constitutional issues. This view also supports amending the Enabling Act and giving additional powers, turning it into a constitutional act that is superior to the whim of any state. Such moves may finally complete Schlecker's dreams of a centralized Germany, but are bound to be met with severe resistance. Some offer negotiations with Bavaria first, though it is unlikely an acceptable compromise will be found without Schlecker's fall. It would delay the constitutionalists, and give us additional time to gather allies. Finally, there is a minority view that no centralization, full of partials, is worth the possible dissolution of the empire. If there is such unprecedented resistance, Schlecker should resign and allow a more acceptable government to replace him. Submit my resignation. Start a negotiation. We're not here to be harsh. For now. That's a fat for now, though. Let's align him. Oh, it's only 40, huh? Wait, what happened to the... Oh, I increased that. German influence? Duke of Saxe Kohlberg Kota receives British dissidents. Last week, particular events took place in the Friedenstein, the Friedenstein Palace in Gotha. The winter residence of the Duke Karl Edward of Saxe Kohlberg and Gotha. At a grand gala of the Anglo-German friendship, the Duke welcomed many representatives from the former British em Empire as well as important functionaries of the British, various British emigre circles, including the infamous Committee for the Restoration of Great Britain. It is no wonder that Carl Edward, a grandson of Queen Victoria, whose English titles were revoked in 1817 under the Titles Deprivation Act, sees close ties with such controversial dissidents organizations. Germany has long gained a reputation in English emigre circles as a last bulwark against socialism, and the formerly shunned Duke is now praised by his ex-enemies as a brilliant example of Anglo-German ties. The circumstances underpinned all the more by Carl Edward's personal ideology, demonstratively reactionary and authoritarian, is he is anything but a friend of the post-March Constitution era's parliamentary order, something else that has found favor of the CRGB, an elitist group considering or consisting primarily of in exiled English businessmen and nobles. Uh, apart from the British guests, numerous uh, local German dignitaries and uh, nobles appeared at the gala, such as business tycoons and representatives of the Dutch's National Conservative State Government. Turing has been a hotbed of right-wing thought for several years, and Gotha in particular has been the seat of a, oh, uh, <clears throat> a seat of a government with a DVLP of participation since the early 1930s. The Fatherland Party maintains close ties to the far-right British dissident scene, and via mob-based DVLP online publisher Valta Bachmeister translated and circulated many dissident literary works. As long as such meetings take place behind closed doors and are not associated with the government, they principally do not pose a problem, nevertheless. In terms of rising global tensions, the caution is advised. A bit more apolitical professionalism would suit the Coburg Duke quite well. A welcome event. A delegation of British far-right dissidents are welcomed by Duke Carl Edward in Germany. Our good friends of Mary England may help us in the future and hopefully won't cause any drama. Hey! Bavaria Berlin Talks. The Bavarian government accepted the offer of talks and joined representatives from a cabinet in a meeting in Berlin, however. Little progress is expected from them, and Bavaria, Bavaria set forth red lines regarding our centralization and plans that simply would not be able to fulfill, not without sabotaging our programs. If we suffer time, however, we might just be a little more prepared for what's going to come next. Please stop for time. Free Marcus campaign? Yeah, sure, why not? Settling disputes with the Ottoman Empire. The Germans and Ottomans have had ups and downs in their relationships. Uh, but now that submitted, the Middle East has been achieved yet again. It's finally time for this new child to include Constantinople in the European order. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. There, let's go there. There you go. Negotiations cease. As expected, the Bavarian representatives returned to Munich without any agreement, nor any strong promises from a cabinet. Disappointed. Yeah, not surprised by the outcome, they have chosen to continue the fight. 
and bring the topic to other other states in order to convince them to join the nullification. What they did not know, however, was that the failed negotiation is exactly what the political capital we need to activate a true plan to pacify the Bavarians. Should be saw through force. Oop. Let's see. Ah, see, they're attacking us. I knew they would eventually. Hello. Did the Pope try to invade that way? Can you guys actually do anything here, maybe? You might actually be able to take Tyranny. Perhaps. Nice. Bavarian Curtema Project. A second meeting of the Schlecker cabinet has been held, this one with a much more unanimous mood than the last. Bavaria has burned all of its bridges, and so in the name of a reformed centralized German empire, it needs to be punished. The two projects have been lodged forth by the government. The first, a Reichstag Act, with which the enabling act would declare a piece of constitutional law, and thus above the law of the states, making it illegal for any state to violate its terms or nullify its effects. The second, a Reich's execution on Bavaria. An intervention in Bavaria, if approved by the Bundestag, will remove the rebellious government of Heinrich Held and appoint a temporary executive authority from Berlin, which will enforce the state's proper dues towards the central government. Ideally, this execution will be achieved without a rebellion of the Bavarian army, and this is a civil war in German territory. That would be unthinkable. However, a majority of the Bundestag is required for this project to go ahead. We can count on votes for Prussia, and Bavaria will always hold Bavaria's own votes. Uh, delegations to negotiate with the other states have already been set forth, and they'll judge whether they want Schlecker's new state or return to the decentralized past. Let's hope the other states are more reasonable. I kind of like this one. Legion First Leopold. The revanchism and militants in the communards forces us to review the state of our border fortifications of the West. Though we should always expect a victorious lightning war. We should not hurt to give some attention toward his defensive measures either, but in case this war turns out differently than the first time. Just in case, you never know. Well, I mean, if I guess. I, I, like I said earlier, when we started this campaign, I wanted us to go with left, you know, social democrats, but I guess we're, at this point, at this rate, we're probably not. Um, I like the organization. Defense is not bad. I think it'd be a good addition. Excavation is good. That's how we do it over here. Do you win here too? The Kingdom of Wurttemberg. Unlike in neighboring Bavaria, particular tendencies never played a too prominent role in Wurttemberg, and yet it is among the most convinced defenders of the Federalist Order. For decades, the Swabian Kingdom has been the bulwark of progressive thought and liberalism within the Empire. No Kolchikov, early electoral system, tendencies towards parliamentarianization, long before the most of the states, and even popular monarchs with enormous wisdom and political expertise. Many iconic progressive-minded statesmen have their own origin in the Deep South, such as Matthias Asberger and Friedrich von Paia. All these factors certainly make Wittenberg one of the most prime and, uh, allies of the Bavarian cause, however. Minister President Eugene Bowes, a respected jurist who presides over a modern coalition of the Central Party, the LVP, and the Farmers League, will not shy away from restraining in the case the Bavarian complaints appear too outrageous or unjustified. After all, even as the Deutschland lead says, freedom will always come to connection with justice. Wittenberg's final sense on the matter therefore remains to be seen. Which up, focus on the unreasonable Bavarian demands. Spend political power to fight the state's votes. The state's choice to cast their votes is affected by election of a hostile chairman in Zentrum, influencing Zentrum deputies. With four. Their lost cause. Ah, uh, we can try it. They submit! After negotiations and government pressure, we've managed to bend the delegates of the Kingdom of Wittenberg and the Bundesrat, and they will now dedicate all their votes to a Reich's execution on the Bavarian rebels. Good! We could use way more trucks and support equipment, though. Can we sort by a mountain the market? And what else are we making here? Guns, railroads, good stuff like that. Nice. What do we got to go with here? That's fine. And tons of planes. Just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of planes. Equipment shipments to East Asia. The next call Alonia Ump has requested more guns to be sent to the operations. 
uh, and East Asia to reduce the shortage and ensure all divisions are at full specification. The travels will find themselves in useful ensuring the stability of our far eastern possessions. Tension between Zentrum and SPD. Unity within. Uh, the democratic opposition suddenly taken a significant blow. A several of our new generation socialists writing for a Vilvots openly call for the secularization of the education system and the fight against the influence of the churches in the politics. In politics, I should say at least. Which caught the attention of the Zentrum politicians. An article war is broken out of the press, each side attacking the other for supposedly weakening the unity of anti-reactionary coalition and putting the struggle in jeopardy. Ultimately, we are the ones who benefit as we can break, take a break from the constant criticism. We'll win by doing absolutely nothing. It's been pretty nice. See what we can do here. The Grand Duchy of Baden. Can you actually win here? The Grand Duchy of Baden, located in the German Southwest, is in many ways quite similar to the neighboring Wart Württemberg. <coughs> uh, shares its democratic and progressive traditions to an even far more reaching degree. The old Alman Almanac frontier was once a burning torchlight of the 1848 revolution in Germany, after all. While the liberals are not the strongest force in the Landtag anymore nowadays, they still are sidelined by both the Zentrum and the SPD during the 1910s. They remain an important pillar of the currently ruling Black Gold Red, uh, Black Red Gold Coalition under Minister President Josef Schmidt. In fact, the notions they helped foster unification attempts within the German liberal movement and eventually culminated the foundation of the LVP in the late 20s, are largely rooted in Baden, humorously called the Parliamentary Mosellander. The uh, parliamentary model state, due to exemplary constructive cooperation between all local parties and a healthy political climate, Baden stands at the foremost front within the empire when it comes to federalist interests. This is, however, not necessarily due to, par to, to particular beliefs, but because of growing skepticism towards the ever-growing influence of the Prussian behemoth and the centrist ambitions of the Reich Chancellor Schleicher. Convincing Karlsruhe of the well-meaning intent of her aims will be a tough task. Hmm. Huh. Ah, still unifications, huh? Ah, they stand with Bavaria, that's not good. Uh, in spite of the means we have attempted to pressure them into thinking otherwise, the delegates of the Grand Duchy of Baden have chosen to, f to defend the actions of the Bavarian government. Uh, <clears throat> in the, the Bundesrat, and now vote against all attempts to expand the enabling act of force or rights execution on Bavaria. Now the Grand Duchy of Alsace Lorraine. The Valkyrie gives its consequences. Uh, has far reaching consequences in Alsace Lorraine's internal political development. The formerly badly integrated ugly duckling of the Empire's western frontier was elevated to a true constitu constituent state under the Bavarian Grand Duke in 1920. And ever since, the region's political conditions have made and quite ironically solely but steadily aligned with themselves with the predominant developments of the Bavaria proper. Like in Munich, a particularist, vastly autonomous branch of the Zentrum has been deeply entrenched in Strasbourg, the People's Party of Alsace Lorraine. Catholic conservative, extremely regionalist, and anti socialist, the ELVP has absorbed almost all the remaining pro autonomy groups in Alsace Lorraine and Lorraine over time and won the masses favor the populist phrase a la Alsace Lorraine to the Alsatians and Lorrainers. After decades of marginalization, the ex Reichstag is now finally riding away with unbroader particularist pride with the emergence of the commune next door. Francophile tendencies have almost been entirely sidelined due to Paris's controversial stance on religion. The LVP's political hegemony is almost con uncontested. Also, Lorraine's close ties to Munich, of course, makes him a prime ally of the Federalist cause. It would be hard to convince them to support efforts against their most important strategic partner within the Empire, but Strasbourg might be more easily swayed by the populist promises of anti-syndicalist, democratic federalist safeguards than we think. And of course they stand with them. Oh, we lost Tony, huh? Where are we at here? Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. The Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is the youngest constituent state of the Empire, only officially joining the ranks in 1919 via a treaty of its ascension in return for giving sovereignty over its own affairs and being granted a broad array of special privileges. While limited liberalization arrives in the wake of the post war March reforms, Luxembourg's regional politics remain dominated by an elite local. Uh, elite of local dignitaries and Catholic conservatives, and a more or less obvious pact with the rather unpopular right wing Catholic Grand Duchess Maria Aldehel. Aldehel. The Luxembourgian Party of the Right, an autonomous branch of the Zentrum similar to the Bavarian People's Party, is infamous for being one of the hotbeds of the Catholic corporatist movement in the Empire. And sympathy for the openly radical right wing ideas reaching into the government's highest uh, cadres. The dominance of the political right, paired with the pro close proximity to the communist arts, increasing radicalism of the local, local working class, and the plethora of coal fields and steelworks. As it reinforced the Grand Duchy's role as a stalwart of, uh, bulwark of anti-syndicalism, 
Our own interests are therefore congruent with theirs, which could be beneficial to persuade Luxembourg to pursue, support our domestic political agenda for the greater good of the national interests. Then again, as a prime ally of Bavaria and the Federalist Axis, Luxembourg might be reluctant to openly abandon the associates of Munich, especially as a targeted government that is also dominated by right-wing Catholics. And of course I stay with them too. Where do we see all this? Grand Duchy of Hesse. In the conservative circles in Berlin, the reputation of the Grand Duchy of Hesse, Darmstadt, has been too great considering the recent past. Under the leadership of the recently deceased Grand Duke Ernst Ludwig, has transformed into the empire's most foremost cultural centers during the last 50 years. A very progressive political and cultural climate fostered both the emergence of the art styles, which were not inherently in accordance with Wilhelm II's extremely traditional stance on the fine arts, and the fruitful cooperation between the most local the local parties. Very much to the delight of the Ernst Ludwig, was long denounced in the capital as a Red Grand Duke. Since late 39, or 37, I should say. <clears throat> the state's liberal traditions are carried out by the, on by the new Grand Duke Georg Donatus, but even more importantly by the progressive Black-Red-Gold Coalition, which has governed the country uninterrupted since the end of the war. The Social Democratic State Minister Bernard Adelung is known for his relatively skeptical opinion about us. It's quite likely that uh, Hess will flock to Bavaria's side in the Bundesrat in an effort to defend the sovereignty of the states around the so south of the main. Therefore, our chances to sway Darmstadt are not the most stellar. Such a princess. Started by Prussia on almost all sides, three minor and barely significant enclaves will withstand the ever-growing influence of Berlin, calmly following their very own political destiny over the course of the last few years. The Duchy of Anhalt, the Principality of schaumburg lipp and the Principality of Lipp. Unlike the Prussian behemoth, these three states have long pursued a moderately liberal course of reform, manifested in moderate Big Ten coalitions under a non-partisan local dignitary or old guard liberal state minister, often supported by a mostly ambivalent monarch with not much interest in political meddling. While the economic crisis resulted in a temporary return of non-partisan experts' cabinets in Buchenberg, Buchenberg, Schaumburg, and Dessau, it cannot be expected that the three dwarf states are in any way supportive of our careful efforts to dismantle democracy and initiate violence measures against the democratic constitu constituent state. Population-wise, all three states barely have 700,000 inhabitants in total, but the ununited power in the Bundesrat should not be underestimated. After all, their three votes make them as strong as the other states with more than double the population and economic potential. Not sure their geographic position makes them vulnerable, however, with the right measures, we might be able to threaten them direct indirectly with to vote in favor of our agenda. And they submit. Thank God. At least we got someone to submit to us. Uh, the two Kaisers of Europe. Stood, oh no, we'll do this one. Religion uh, first, Leopold. Our allies in Spain have collapsed through a brutal civil war in which the cynical forces in Catalonia threw an deception of the European power hostile to us. To prevent this growing circlement of the Kaiserreich, we need to support the monarchists, a religion named after Leopold, the Prince of Hohenzollern, the King of Spain that never was, will fight for our interests there. Absolutely. So, the Sicilian guys are doing alright. Uh, you might actually be able to push these guys out with, with us helping them. And you can go in there probably. <clears throat> Try to win on every front here, man. Fifteen. Oh, okay. So there it is. Bavarian nullification laws. The centralizing moves of the Reichskanzler Kurt von Schleicher forced out a stronger reaction from the German states, led by Bavaria, who seeks to defend the constitutional rights and autonomy against ever encroaching authoritarianism. Lacking any other options, the government of Bavaria has declared a nullification of federal law in Bavaria, creating an unprecedented crisis. Schleicher's solution to this potentially illegal act is the Reich's execution on Bavaria and an amendment to the Enabling Act, allowing the government to intervene in member states to establish states commissars if said state does not follow the terms of the act. However, uh, all this requires approval by the Bundesrat, and whether Schlacker is able to convince a majority of the delegates in the chamber is to follow his will, but determine whether the government survives or whether democracy in Germany will survive or not. There are 63 votes in the Bundesrat of the German Empire, 32 votes are required for majority. So we currently have 25, they have 17. The Hasianic cities. The three Hasianic cities of the Hamburg, Bremen, and Lübeck in the far north are insofar special as they constitute only the Republican member states within the otherwise monarchical dominated Europe. Uh, or empire, and yet they can ironically be considered even more traditional than their princely neighbors. An extremely upper, at least upper class of wealthy Grand Burger dynasties has controlled the cities for centuries, and as only very recently political parties have begun to penetrate these power structures of old and became a force to be reckoned with, the cities, the citizen councils, and senates. All three states maintain governments with SPD participation during the past two decades, and Lubeck even has its own social democratic first mayor. However, partisan predominance in government affairs hasn't gotten the ancient pearls of the Hansa to lose their distinct regional identity. As it stands, they remain one of the firmest defenders of the Federalist Order. The sovereignty of all constituent states need to be remained unquestioned and uncontested, and thus Hamburg, Bremen, and Lubeck's stance on the Reich's execution in Bavaria can be described as highly skeptical. 
Then they sell them, huh? They have chosen poorly. We gotta knock out at least one group here. Grand Duchy to Mecklenburg and Oldenburg. Uh, treaty access to Ireland. The Irish government is offered to give us military access along with base or naval and air ports next to Britain in exchange for non aggression pact and Germany guaranteeing their independence. Uh. Sure, why not? The Grand Duchies of Oldenburg, Mecklenburg, Schwerin, and Mecklenburg Strelitz are the quintessential. Bulwarks of agrarian interest in the empire, their economy is built upon the giant rye fields and livestock pastures. Bank and roll organizations like Landbund are extremely powerful. The two Mecklenburgs have always been quite uh, happy. A reactionary, being in part large dominated by the Yucca dynasty, similar to that of neighboring East Elbian, having remained absolute monarchies up until 1920, but the circumstances in Oldenburg are more than complex for decades. As a liberal state with a progressive electoral law in a countryside dominated not by Yukers, but by thousands of smallhold are, uh, farmers. Uh, the political climate only began to change during the 20s when the North German agrarian crisis caused the emergence of the far-right radicalism. Nowadays, Oldenburg is almost among the first constituent states in Germany with the DVLP participation and the government. Meanwhile, the Mecklenburgs found themselves under uncontested control of the DKP. While all three states pursue a right-wing agenda have generally authoritarian aims in mind. Uh, they are still... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, slightly reluctant to work with us. Schleich appears to them as unpredictable blend of old and new, and they are unsure whether his chancellorship will safeguard the interests of the agrarian countryside as much as they hope. On the other hand, the farming and strongholds of the north have not much to gain from cooperation with Munich. It is very likely they'll have to vote in favor and approve the Reich's execution. Oh, what do they say with what? That makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. Why would they choose that? Also, if this doesn't go well for us, uh, I'm going to like go back and do it again. Because that's stupid. The Kingdom of Spain accepts. The Kingdom of Spain has accepted the terms of a military mission and will welcome them in their capital as soon as they arrive. This will bring much new experience by the state of modern war to Germany and our aid to our allies as well, meddling in Poland. The Polish elections in 1938 are looking extremely tense. The liberal opposition to the MKP and the King's government has only grown during the e economic depression, and no doubt because of the foreign agents smearing us at every turn. The King wishes to keep the elections as legitimate as possible, but we can pressure the government to skew the electoral process a bit further in their favor, accompanied with a large sum of bolts without campaigning. Discreetly. Fundum. The Kingdom of Saxony. <clears throat> The two Kaisers of Europe stood on the same side of the Valkyrie, and there's no reason for that to change a second time. Let's establish permanent military cooperation between the German and Austrian powers and teach our southern brethren all new tactics to the war developed in the Kriegsschule. Kingdom of Saxony has been known by many as a nickname throughout its eventful history, modeled the model state of conservatism, testing ground of reaction of the Red Kingdom. These terms hail from a time when Saxon politics were under the firm control of an uncontested conservative national liberal front against emerging social democrats who, in spite of extremely repressive electoral restrictions, had managed to achieve almost 50% of the votes but had no presence in the law in practice. Only in 1909, these restrictions were mostly lifted after widespread strikes and the SPD's seats in the Landtag rose from 1 to 25 in subsequent elections. Ever since, especially since 1920, social democratic dominance over the kingdom has remained unimpeded. However, the Saxon SPD are quite different from the parties branches of other parts of the empire. They are in, part, they are in favor of the cooperation with even more rightist bourgeoisie parties. Uh, well aware that a positive attitude towards the state in the tradition of the Ferdinand Lazal benefits the party more than the remaining eternally in opposition. Patriotism and Saxon particularism are also play a major role in the program, gaining them the trust of the late King Friedrich August III as well as successor Georg II. This, of course, could make them powerful allies of the Bavarians, however. Uh, their general also embodies many things that the Saxons have propagated for years, most probably a healthy combination of socialism and patriotism. Thus, uh, uh, SPD, LVP, P and WP government interests can play a very important role in fulfilling our political aims. Hey, Saxony submits. At least that's good. That's getting really close. Nice. Uh, we're not sitting in there because honestly, I think it's, in general at this point, it's very tough doing this because there's a lot of uh, hills and whatnot, and that's not good for us. Who's next? Local Zinjian politicians attack the government, several mayors and a few members of the government. 
State governments, all from the Central Party, have recently launched criticisms of the direction of our government, claiming that some of the projects and plans envisioned by the cabinet stand against the democratic nature of the Constitution and are highly suspicious. Their statements publicized among the press demand a return to the moderate conservative government, which would defend tradition and the rights of the states while retaining the achievements of the march. Who are these nobodies? Exactly. Nobodies. It's not much right now, but whatever. Uh, more military factories. That's what we got to do. Oh, hello. Got a couple ships here, yes. Capital, capital ship, yes. Got a lot of destroyers. Duchy of Brunswick. While peace and order have ostensibly long returned to the Duchy of Brunswick, memories of the socialist uprising attempts in late 36, the third revolution of Brunswick in soil in 106 years, are so quite vivid in the minds of the local population to governance. The old unpopular liberal conservative cabinet of State Minister of Anna Krushenthal was not reinstated in the aftermath of the Iraq execution, and instead being replaced by a temporary nonpartisan emergency government under Berlin appointed but local state commissar. However, the foundations of the new cabinet have grown increasingly shaky over the course of the last two months due to the lack of broad parliamentary support, and the resistance both on the left and the right is steadily growing, it's, it's only a question of time before it falls. For now, however, the administration remains in charge, and with the full control over the Duchy's two votes in the Bundesrat, also they decided in favor of the benefactors in Berlin on the matter of the planet or execution in Bavaria. Only extremely unlikely odds would probably be able to change that, but who knows, maybe the scars of 1836 were still deeper than they might appear, causing the Brunswickers to make an erratic and unexpected decision, thereby thwarting their plans when we expected at the least. Hey, they submit. I thought threatening them would, would work. We need one more frickin' vote. That's all we need. A frickin' vote. Oh, they... Oh! I like how hungry he's been dismantled. It won't matter in the end. War of National Reclamation. Good, good luck with that. Good. Let him try to beat you. But in the DVLP, uh, the aftermath of the 36th election was not counted the Fatherland Party for two decades. It helped to bring a conservative revolution to Germany, even by allying with the moderate right. Yet even after the aftermath of the greatest crisis in German economic history, was not enough to propel them to power. Many of the DVLP's financial backers pulled out, recognizing that their money had been thrown into a giant hole. Old enmities from a decade ago resurfaced. Alfred Hugenberg proclaimed a challenge to the chairman of the party, Ulrich von Hassel, yet again. Hugenberg's aggressive, reactionary faction, even more anti-Semitic and anti-parliamentary than their rivals. Attempted to topple house on a party conference, yet failed, and was chosen of the past, splitting off. Over the year, the DVLP began to disintegrate. Hugenberg's faction formed the Deutsche National Reichspartei, uh, whereas a few other ambitious figures in the local branches either defected to the radical far right, such as the DVP and the DSP, switching to conservatives, becoming independent, or even forming their own doomed right wing party. The fragile unity of the German far right has ended, and founding dominance of radical current once more, much like it had before the Valkyrie. Start bringing these small groups into our fold. Hey, look at that political power that we still have none of. The Thuringian Circle. The final region where votes are in question, Thuringia is truly one of the absolute contrasts. Amid forested hills and idyllic medieval towns, highly specialized industry, extensive farmlands, and a cosmopolitan high culture meets no minor peasant life, and the political left meets a political right. The extreme fragmentation into eight small principalities plus a large Prussian part of the north has held long held the region back, but unification demanded by the progressive radicals for decades remains incompatible with the German constitution. Ironically, the fragmentation is now at least one enormous advantage. Together, all the Thuringian states with less than two million inhabitants have more votes than the powerful Bavaria with almost seven million inhabitants, making the precious allies to achieve a majority. Can we win here? Yeah, we couldn't. Currently, four of the Turingian states find themselves under a rightist government, mostly with the Latin Bund, DKP, NLP, and WP participation. Since very recently, the DVLP is also on the rise in Saxe, Kultberg, and Gotha, which was a hotbed of the SPD a few decades ago. They are already firmly established, in part due to the indirect support of the reactionary Duke Carl Edward, and they continue to grow in popularity in the other states. Historically, most of Turingia has always proven to be a stalwart ally on the, which we could count when we need a majority, so our hopes are high that our interests are aligned with those of the governments in Gotha, Weimar, Altenberg, and Greis. Are you, are you, are you, are you like smoking me right now? What the barnacles is going on? And appear in escalation. Now, this tensions grow between Germany and France. It's not the unnationalistic fervor of the th 1914 that the nations are feeling, but rather growing dread and pessimism. Members of the trenches loom in the minds of older citizens. To save Europe from the brink of war, the Bund Neues Vaterland, the leading anti-war organization in Germany, has petitioned the government to initiate peace talks with France and Britain, to at least try to avoid any conflict. The signatories of the address include prominent pacifists such as Kurt Grossmann and Albert von Einstein, but also a large number of influential figures from social democratic and Christian and democratic circles. 
Even if you do not truly believe in de-escalating the situation, it might still be useful to try to delay the conflict. Our military buildup has been delayed by recent economic woes, and any amount of additional time to prepare is favorable. Well, if we can just keep the peace in the West for just some time, perhaps it will also dissuade Russia's aggression and posture for now. Fine. So now you're attacking, so maybe we'll attack, help attack as well. Oh, maybe. A Turingian circle. With Ga while Gotha, Weimar, Altenburg, and Graz are led by the right, the other four Turingian states are led by right left wing governments. The SPD dominates those states with a strong industrial mining sector and a lack <coughs> in, in agricultural potential. While a strong land board presence to hamper their popularity, the Social Democrats govern almost uncontested in these regions. Royce Gera, Sachs Meiningen, and two Schwarzburgs have been ruled practically continuously by SPD like governments since the post Belkrieg reforms, and the local monarchies have remained mostly apathetic to this extreme political caesura, devoting their time to charity and the fine arts instead of trying to meddle in local politics, of course. Look at that. The Social Democratic governments in Gera, Meiningen, Rudolstadt, and Sondershausen might be harder to sway to our side than the conservative neighbors. However, considering they have never been too keen about federalism, it's quite likely that they prefer the Red General over the condescending conservative Bavarians to the south. Are you freaking kidding me, the false striker? No. I'm not. No. We've gone this far with him. So we're going to go back. That's so stupid. And I'm going to get Schleicher back. So. The Nubian Federation accepted the terms of a military mission and welcomed them into the capital as soon as they arrived. Also bringing needed experience about the state of modern war in Germany and inter as well. Great. That's so stupid. Control the economy, Poland. Ooh. Finance the EEDC. Ooh, that seems kind of cool. Who's the German... Military missions to Central Asia, huh? As much as I want to do all this stuff, because I would like to do all this stuff, we still need to do stuff down here, like a W system, which I read last week. So, if you know this one, please go ahead. Infantry motorization is not bad, but still. Burr breakthrough would be pretty nice. But, I still want to do this one, too. Uh. Secretariat for Arbeitsbeschäftigung. The economic crisis has revealed that we cannot fully trust private enterprise to quickly reemploy millions of newly unemployed German workers. Here, the same must intervene to provide relief. We shall establish a secretary of job creation whose task will be able to bring in and expand large public works. They'll use as little machinery as much manual labor as possible, and so we'll be able to provide for thousands of an hour of need. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there because I got to go back and make sure that we don't lose a guy. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue fighting in Bulgaria, which we're actually doing okay now. Fighting in Italy, which are doing, we're defending very well, and Spain, which we're winning the war. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.